My name is David and I messed up, but in this video we are all going to learn from my mistake and figure out how to fix it. So if you've seen the Idaho winter video where I went out with Venture to Rome and Revere Overland, you will have seen that my steering rack froze up on the Bronco. I probably could have done a little bit better job in that video telling you exactly what happened and why it happened, but that's what this video is going to address. I definitely could have been better when I did the install and question parts, but I wasn't the only party to blame here. Anyways, let's get the rack out and then we'll talk about exactly what happened. Now that I have a tie rod off, let's talk about what happened. So this is an Icon heavy duty tie rod and this is the boot that comes with it. You can see there's no, um, there's no ledge to be able to put, um, to put a clamp on. So uh, it's kind of one of those situations where, uh, actually for reference, this is the, new set of tie rods I'll be putting on and there's a ledge right there for you to put a clamp on. So it's kind of one of those situations where I know enough to be dangerous. Um, a tie rod swap is really easy so I didn't look at the instructions um, and when I saw the boot like this without a place to put a clamp I was like okay well maybe Icon engineered it that way to just rest in this little groove that's on the tie rod. That was my assumption. Um, kind of looking back on it that's a that's a really dumb assumption to have made um but it doesn't change the fact that that that's what i thought at the time so i went with it and i had faith that um that icon uh designed it to be that way had i looked at the instructions i would have been like something's wrong here this needs to have a clamp on it i would have called but I got a, gotten a hold of Icon some way or another, maybe. They still haven't responded to my emails and there's no phone number that I can find. Um, so who knows? But I would have tried to get different boots before completing the install. Um, so definitely my fault for not questioning the part that I was given, but also Icon's fault for just either haphazardly shipping things or a terrible boot design. Actually, I don't think that's a terrible boot design. It seems like the boots uh, in pictures at least have those clamps. So maybe it's a manufacturing problem. I don't really know. All I know is they sent me the wrong boots. Um, that's their responsibility. I put them in without questioning them. That's on me. So uh, these new tie rods are from Rough Country. They're um, kind of a temporary thing. I have a lot going on with the Bronco, so I'm going to be replacing these yet again, something with Heim joints that will be able to accept a little bit more travel. But, um, but honestly, I'm extremely impressed with these. These things are freaking beefy. Focus, please. Look at that. That's wild. So anyways, since I didn't clamp off the boots and they weren't sealed, that allowed water to get into the boots and eventually into the steering rack itself. So the steering rack is waterlogged. So I need to take the steering rack out. I need to soak it with some penetrating lubricant, um, dry it out as best I can, and then put it all back together with the new, with the new tie rods and new boots and uh, new, I got new bearings for it as well, assuming those bearings are absolutely shot that are in there due to the contaminants that are now in the rack. So that's kind of my, my game plan. Um, it is not a permanent fix. This is a temporary fix, but I have a more permanent solution coming soon, hopefully. So um, I, I need my Bronco roadworthy again. <laughs> so this is where we're at.
right, so here we have the steering rack. Um, it actually looks really good on this end. I don't think there's really any issue over there, but I'm gonna take the bearing out of this end, and then the bearing out of this end. Actually, I'm gonna have to take that end cap off and then take the bearing off and then uh, stick some penetrating oil in here and try and clean it out and just let it drip down. So that's kind of how I'm gonna uh, attempt to do this. Yeah, should, should be fun. There's already a lot of water and stuff coming out of the rack, so uh, I'm definitely glad I pulled it. So to be honest, I think this is good news. It looks like it didn't actually go into the rack itself. It all just kind of stayed in the end cap, it looks like. So um, I'm hoping I can clean this up really nicely. I don't want to have to take the pulleys out, but I'm going to try and uh, clean this up as best I can. And I honestly think it'll be okay. take this bearing out in here because I think that to be honest needs to be replaced but I it's a it's the 74 weld end cap so the bearing that I have to go there will not work um, so I'm gonna see if there's anything like uh, underneath the bearing itself and try and clean it up like I said I have a more permanent solution coming so this is this is a temporary thing. There we go. Okay, so uh, hopefully you can see that there's a lot of like contaminants and stuff in there. That's where the the bearing goes, um, and I think that's where most of the sound is coming from when I because the the steering grinds when I turn the wheel. But I really think it's localized kind of to the passenger side of the steering rack. Um, the driver's side looks really good. I'm still gonna replace that bearing and inspect it just to make sure everything's okay. But I really think that, uh, I think I'm lucky and water didn't get into the rack itself. It got into the end cap for sure, but I don't think it went much further. Um, if it did, I would think I would see it on the other end of the rack. Uh, all the same, I'll uh, pull that bearing and and see if that was the case. Um, but other than that, I'm just gonna clean up the end cap and this side of the steering rack as best I can, button it back up, and then um, that'll we'll call it good after that.
that uh, belt and pulley system that, that we were just looking at, um, there is definitely some contaminant behind that. But I, I'm, I'm not gonna pull the pulley. That whole system, if you move that, um, then it moves the steering rack position in relation to where you left the steering wheel. So it's really important that the rack itself doesn't move. Um, which means um, I'm just gonna have to deal with the grinding um, until I get a new rack. So it, there doesn't appear to be any damage to where it would affect like how safe the vehicle is. Um, so like there's no metal shavings or no like chunks of the steering rod or anything um, that I found. So I think it's just a matter of it's dirty and it's not gonna it's not gonna sound too great when I am when I'm driving around so so anyways that's kind of where we're at um, I'm going to clean the belt and pulley system and behind it as best I can but I honestly don't think there's anything I can I can really do about it at this point so pretty much my entire life uh, every time rough country has been talked about it's been in a negative light. Uh, cheap products, they break easy, they're not, you know, they just spend more money and get better products. But, I gotta be honest, and I'm not working with Rough Country, I bought these with my own money, but I'm like super impressed with these. Um, I, <laughs> yeah, these things are beefy as hell. And they still have a, a Zerk fitting, so they're easily greasable. Um, I really like uh, this here. You have um, six wrench flats on it, as opposed to, uh, I think there were two wrench flats on the OEM. There's four on the Icon tie rods. So to have six there when you're working in a tight area just means you have more opportunity to get some leverage on it and actually uh, you know get it off so um, yeah I'm I'm really super impressed with it and it's kind of making me rethink my stance on rough country I think I'm gonna give them a, a second look wherever wherever it makes sense they may not be the solution for everything but I'm not gonna disregard them that's for sure so I have this kind of cleaned up as best I can uh, not not great by any means, but um, it's kind of where we're at. So there's there's still definitely a lot of contaminants and stuff in there. Um, but I don't really have a choice right now. So I'm gonna put this back together, put it back in the Bronco. Okay, so the rack is back in. 
Um, I took it for a drive and I think I have a mount or something loose. There's just a little bit of vibration, but otherwise the steering is, is working. Power assist is still working. All that is good to go. There's still definitely a grinding happening. So what I think is happening is there's a ball bearing um, for the power steering assist. Uh, there's like, you will we'll remember seeing there's like a big pulley and then like an idler pulley and then another smaller one um, that is driven from the electric assist. That bigger pulley has a ball bearing in it and I think that is kind of toast. And that's what's making the sound. It, I can still drive it, it's still safe to drive. Uh, I was talking to the guys at 74 Weld, they've seen it multiple times. So pretty sure that's what's happening and that it's okay to drive for a little while, but I definitely need a new steering rack. So hopefully I'll have one coming soon. That will be the permanent fix for uh, this whole steering issue. And, um, you know, we'll see, we'll see. I would love to put this all behind me and just start going on trips again. So let's talk about lessons learned. Um, it's kind of humbling for me. I think uh, I have been working on cars for a very long time and I was maybe a little bit overconfident in, in this installation. Had I looked at the instructions, like I said, I would have seen that there's an outer ledge for a clamp for the boot and and mine didn't have one so I would have questioned that I would have contacted Icon attempted to um, and see if I could get a new set of boots I didn't do that because I because tie rods are really really easy so I was like okay it's it's no problem whatever and then I had faith in Icon that they designed it that way to be sufficient. And like I said at the beginning of the video, in hindsight, um, it's, it's I, I shouldn't have just gone with it. Like, I know better than that. So that's my takeaway and a takeaway for you if you, if you want it. If something feels off with an aftermarket part, question it because you can do far more damage to your vehicle if you just run with it. Uh, case in point, it's a new rack is anywhere from $1,300 to $1,700 from the dealer. If you go to the aftermarket, it's anywhere from 4,000 to like six grand. Um, so it's a very expensive mistake to make. So anyways, we'll see. Um, <laughs> I'll put that out of the way. So anyways, that's what I learned. That's kind of where we're at. Um, Hopefully a permanent solution is, is on the way and uh, we can get back to the videos I really like to make, which is adventure videos and uh, exploring and stuff like that. So I hope this was helpful, at the very least insightful into um, kind of the steering rack and how it's made up and, and stuff like that. Um, the different components associated with it. And if you run into the same type of issue, boots fail all the time, whether they're aftermarket or OEM, you could get tears in them and stuff like that. So this could happen to you without having the issue that I had with Icon, right? So hopefully this is some good information for you and uh, you kind of know what to look out for. So until next time, I hope you're able to get off the grid and off the grind. I'll see you in the next one.